Item number SCP-3379 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures or Sea Traffic within 15 kilometers of SCP-3379 is to be rerouted. Two boats are to patrol the area surrounding SCP-3379. SCP-3379-1 instances are to be delivered to the nearest research site for study. Description SCP-3379 is a rectangular portal approximately 8 meters beneath the surface of the Arctic Ocean, measuring 10 meters by 15 meters and surrounded by a concrete frame. SCP-3379 is located 12 kilometers north of Bastrumfik Island, Russia. Objects here, after designated, SCP-3379-1 sporadically emerge from SCP-3379 and float to the surface. No pan has yet been found to the timing of SCP-3379-1 manifestations. SCP-3379-1 instances vary widely in composition and appearance. Approximately 70% of SCP-3379-1 instances appear to be carcasses of living organisms in various states of preservation. As of January 1st, 2018, over 350 instances have been recovered. Instance Description 3. A dead albino voice displays no other anomalous properties. 11. A mass of fat and bone fragments. DNA sequences appear cetacean in origin, but do not completely match any known species. 41. 12 sets of girls wrapped in a synthetic polymer packaging. DNA sequences match those of SCP-924. 62. A large glass jar containing shark fins suspended in a saline gel. 89. A 16-meter-long azomosaur neck, heavily decomposed. 119. A mason jar containing an unidentified liquid. Exposure to the liquid causes strong nostalgic feelings. Chemical analysis of the liquid revealed the presence of sodium chloride, ethanol, pepperin, beta endorphin, and several dozen uncharacterized organic compounds. To date, SCP-3379's edge can only be crossed by sentient beings. Testing with fish equipped with cameras failed to reveal any hostile forces on the other side of the edge, thus a preliminary exploration was approved. Exploration Log 3379-1 Forward D-11424 was provided with an insulated wetsuit, a knife, a flashlight, a camera, and two hours of air supply, as well as radio communications device in order to relay back to Dr. Osio, the exploration coordinator. Begin log. D-11424 appears approximately four meters from the precipice of SCP-3379. Everything looks good. Ready? Well, I did say I always wanted to be a diver. Let's do this. All right. Remember to carve things as you see them. Got it. Proceed through SCP-3379. Okay, going in. D-11424 swims through SCP-3379 and disappears from external view. D-11424's camera shows a large number of concrete gates similar in appearance to SCP-3379, arranged in a two-dimensional grid pattern. Surroundings are indistinct. As the lighting is low, but down appears contiguous with the ocean floor. D-11424 does not appear to notice this, as he is facing downwards while continuing to swim. Can you still hear me? Loud and clear, Doctor. Describe your surroundings. Huh, I still like I'm in water, but I'm able to stand on the ground. I see. Whoa! Continue. There's a sort of war here. There's hundreds of concrete gates, just like the one I just went through, all lined up. Anything else? Not sure. It's pretty dark here. There's a bit of ambient light coming from above, 
but not much. Crap, there's something moving over there. I'm gonna check out the next gate. No movement was visible on the camera. Alright. D-11424 swims through the aperture immediately to the left of SCP-3379. What do you see? Still watery, but it's more clouded. I think I am in a river. I can feel a small current. Make sure you swim close to the gate. Yeah, of course. Man, there's some freaky fish in here. Don't look like any I've ever seen. Several semi-transparent fish, about the size of salmon, swim past, followed by a large serpentine creature, roughly half a meter in length. Be careful. Yeah, they might be a nominee's piranhas or something. <laughs> Hold on. There's a big school of big fat ones coming towards me. Make sure. Crap! Several large red fish with four eyes bump into D-11424, sending him downstream for an indeterminate distance before he grabs onto a rock to hold himself still. Is everything all right? Damn it! The current is much stronger here. I'm only still because of this rock. Stay calm. Can you see the portal you came through? Can you swim back towards it? Uh, no and no. Are there any portals visible? D-11424 scans his surroundings before spotting the serpentine creature from before. No apertures are visible. I'm going to have to go with no. I think I can see the surface of the water. Permission to try and make it to a riverbank? Permission granted. Alright, here goes. D-11424 takes several looks at his surroundings, glances at the serpentine creature, which now appears to be holding several fish in its mouth, and then pushes himself off the rock towards a natural stone wall. D-11424 makes several noises of exertion and is pushed further downstream before surfacing and holding onto a crag in the rock wall. Whew! Did you see that? Did you see that? D-11424 looks out a wide river, flanked on one side by a large stone cliff and the other by dense forest. <laughs> yes, I saw it. Now describe your surround- Oh, several creatures resembling walruses are seen surveying the riverbank. They possess blonde hair stylized in a mullet and black leather jackets with various decorations. A large net drags behind him, attached to the belt by hooks. And I see a portal. Behind the walruses can be seen another portal with a clear path leading to it from the riverbank. Reporting your situation, walruses, riverbank, portal. I think if I can climb over there, I can get out. Of course, I can climb over to where I think a portal and the water is and work that out. But continue to observe the walruses. Really? The walruses the hairdos. They are doing nothing to nobody. The walruses throw an end into the water. They're just fishing, may I return? Dr. Osio pauses as she is conferring with the research team for input. Oh, screw it. I'm going. Please wait for input. I am a free interdimensional man. I am going. D-11424 begins to scale the rock wall. He has since approximately five meters before pausing. Whew! This isn't as easy as I thought it would be. Maybe I'll... Crap! D-11424 loses his grip and falls into the river. 11424! D-11424 is swept further downstream. I'm okay! I'm okay! Just slipped. Need to find another rock. Ugh. What was that? A large number of iridescent green fish resembling catfish obscured the camera. I'm trapped in something along with these fish. Can you... It's a net! Good, try to cut yourself out with your knife. What do you think I'm doing? And now we're moving. The net containing D-11424 in the fish surfaces. Can you see anything? Fish are blocking the camera. It's the walruses. They hold us up. And they're uh, a bit bigger up close. How big? I don't know, maybe 15 feet? Also known as squid in metric? Have they noticed you yet? No, thankfully. Good. That leather must have come from some big cow. The net stops moving. 
Uh-oh. What? Four of the voice entities are now visible, and are looking at D-11424. I, uh, think they see me. Are they hostile? So far, no. At this point, two of the entities begin to vocalize to one another, and gesture towards D-11424. I think they're deciding what to do with me. Well... One entity opens the net and lifts up D-11424 seemingly by his leg. Unhand me, foul beast! The two entities confess again. Well, they haven't killed me yet. A third entity inspects D-11424 and begins to vocalize excitedly and gesture to the other entities. Uh, should I start swinging the knife? Negative. I'm getting kinda dizzy here. The entities return D-11424 to the net, tie it closed, and haul it into the large wagon. That's better. Where are they taking you? To the border by the riverbank, it looks like. <sighs> this is where I tell you, you were right, huh? You don't have to. All right, see you on the other side. Hope I'm not sacrificed to something. D-11424 is carried through the portal and emerges into a desert environment. Several unidentified birds can be seen flying overhead. Motion continues to suggest D-11424 is being carried. Be real with me. What are the chances I get out of this alive? Slim. They look like my high school bullies. Smell like them, too. That might be the fish, though. I'm gonna be honest. My knife is doing jack squat. The rope is too thick. Any ideas? None so far. Looks like by me in for a ride. Oh hey, that's a much better looking portal. D11424 turns camera to face towards an aperture in the desert that the walruses appear to be moving towards. The border is made of polished red stone and several ornate designs are visible. The inside is obscured by the walruses. Oh yeah, yeah, this is me getting sacrificed. Calling it now. The sound of the large crowd comes audible as the walruses approach the aperture. Oh god, what is that stench? The walruses cross over. The sky is dull white and appears to have a solid boundary. No sun or stars are visible. The source of the lighting is unknown. God, it's like being inside a fish's stomach. Wait, when did I lose my scuba gear? Describe your surroundings. Right, we're still moving. Nothing but a weird fake sky and novel smells. There's other, uh, not many people I guess, but things walking around all over the place here. Actually, scratch that. We just went past a crowd of elfuses. I'm sorry, repeat? You heard me, elfuses. Pulling a gigantic cart with chopped up, uh, train pieces on it, and we stopped. Alright, your camera's still obscured with fish, so call things as you see them. You got it. There's plenty of fancy looking gates, kind of like the one we went through to get here. All shapes and sizes, just past when the size of a condo had gold edges all around. Some six-legged giant walked out through there. Describe the layout. You mentioned the sky, but it's still a horizon. Not sure. There's a wolf gate, like earlier. Where well, everyone seems to come through, it seems like to be a bit curved. I can't quite see where it ends. Away from war, I can't tell. It looks endless. Which direction are they taking you? We were going directly away from the wall, but then we turned to the right. There's stands and canopies everywhere. I can't see the horizon. The wagon stops. All right, we're stopped. Time to get disemboweled. The net is emptied onto a wooden shelf, and D-11424 appears to be bound by the walruses and covered by a sheet. I'm not really into this. One of the walruses begins vocalizing as several sets of footsteps and creaking wheels draw close. So, Cooper, my man, got the usual. What is perceived as English by listeners is, upon study of the audio, a series of unrelated vocalizations that more closely match the mouth movements made by associated entities. Despite the mind-affecting nature, testing has revealed no negative effects of exposure. Oh yeah, Muxbew, get the cash in the hole. Aye, Erickson. 
Another one was spoken like this. You got a what? Sure, we might be ripe for a trade, depending on what you got, of course. The sheet covering D-11424 is whisked away. The entities speaking to the walruses appear to be humans dressed in traditional Viking garb. With small glowing charms decorating the belts and helmets and beards. Whoa, spell cover. That ain't no fish. You seriously couldn't tell he looks like one of us. So, Cooper focalized it softly. Well, yeah, he's got no beard, but whatever. Hey, you, can you understand me? Me? <laughs> of course you, who else? You speak English? English? I'll give you uh, six extra rockfish for him. So, Cripper bears his tusk and vocalizes loudly. You've lost your mind. Twelve, then. So, Cripper nods and shakes the Viking's hand with flipper. A second Viking pursuit named Muxpeel helps the large crate of black purple fish and exchanges it for a crate of so Cripper's green fish. Lush are doing business with ya. So, my friend, how do you find yourself in this pickle? I was, uh, exploring and I got lost. Heh, <laughs> you're a long ways from your home, I. I take you back to the radio with us, but I'm banished from dear myself, eh? Banished? You? If you know which way you came through, we can help guide you before we head back. Well, could you point me to the border the waters that come through? I gotta turn around and way in, but once I get back to the world, I can find my way back home. Sure thing! Bundle up! Go ahead and take the stagfish and trade with the yolk honey. I'll escort our pal here to the doors. Several of the charms in his beard gleam temporarily. I really appreciate that, man. Right, right. Now make yourself useful and hold these bags, okay? Ericsson and D-11424 continue walking for about ten minutes. I don't remember going this way. It's a shortcut, friend. Trust me. Right. Ericsson stops at a large store covered in an ornate red canopy. Just need to make a wee stop. Got just something for the road, as it were. Cool, you don't really have to, I mean. I insist on me honor. Now stand right there. It'll be a surprise. All right. D-11424 looks around. A crash is heard, followed by both Ericsson and an unidentified voice yelling. The canopy collapses. Wait, what? Several tentacles reach out from underneath the wreck of the canopy, wriggling wildly. Instead of suckers, the tentacles possesses four fingered hands. Two of these tentacles attempt to seize D-11424 and Ericsson. The latter room successfully evades. Oh, come on! Thieves! Ericsson, you bastard! Ericsson whistles and several charms in his beard begins to glow. A glowing blue barrier resembling sheet music forms between him and a mass of tentacles. Dragon with his companions returned. And Ericsson jumps aboard with his stolen goods. Screw you! D-11424 bites several of the fingers on the tentacles, causing it to release him. The Roo! I'm out of here. Talk to Osio, which way? I'm not sure. Just get out of here and we'll work it out. D-11424 begins running. Yay, static. That's always a good sign. If you can hear me, I think the coast is clear. The tentacles thing is chasing down the Vikings now. Now to find my way out of here. D-11424 wanders for a few minutes before stopping at a crude pyramid composed of stacked beating hearts, all singing in harmony. Okay, yeah, I remember hearing this one on the way in. I think I'm going the right way. The motion can be heard. D-11424 begins running once again. Okay, maybe not out of the woods yet. Where do I? Huh! An entity made entirely of cardiovascular muscles approaches D-11424 and begins vocalizing by pumping at irregular intervals, which push air through pipes on top of its head. Okay, never mind, never mind, going away, that was not a fun time, I. D-11424 approaches a pit with a small fence around it. Something shiny, wet, and several shades of purple is briefly visible over the precipice. D-11424 gags. 
Oh, hey, Arcio, good news. Found a source of the smell. D11424 rounds the corner, comes upon a large rotting canine head. Inside, a small group of large mobile pocket knives, with six limbs made of butterfly knives and wings made of several different types of blades. All of the knife creatures are huddled around a pool of white ooze containing small strips of pink meat. Behind the pool is a desk, behind which a humanoid dog stands and appears to converse with the knives. Okay, nice. D11424 descends a spiral staircase and appears in a large red open hall, inside of which much commotion is audible and innumerable entities are visible. Also, I'm going to admit something I don't admit often. I was wrong. This is definitely not the way I came in. Mmm, good talk. I'm lost. D11424 approaches a large concrete plaza with rows of human-like bodies suspended from oversized fishing hooks. Faded pink outlines on the ground are shaped like airplanes. Oh, God! <clears throat> no, 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 no! D11424 wipes his mouth and sprints in the opposite direction. Fantastic! Well, seeing as people here seem to speak English for no really good reason, I suppose I will, uh... Several pale mouthless humanoid entities with real-like appendages instead of legs are seen staring at D11424 as they approach the stairs. What? What? World warriors, do I look funny to you? They surround D11424. Cause to become pretty fair, you guys look very funny to me. One of the entities points above D11424, hmm? D11424 looks up and sees a large tube above him, with several triangle designs on its side. Looking down, a large yellow X can be seen underneath D11424's feet. Ugh, figures. D11424 is abruptly pulled upwards into the tube by some form of suction, and sent through a series of tubes. After sustaining several injuries, D11424 is expelled onto something soft. Static at this point is too prominent and the room too dark for any clear image to be made out. Chirping and hooting can be heard. Oh, Germany critic guys, not only is my angle Germany broken along with the rib properly, this is definitely a pile of birds. News update. After running my hands over the thing, these are definitely fused birds. Wonderful. They did make my landing softer though, which is nice. Oh wow! Like, a minute went by without anything happening. That's new. Calming, comforting even. Okay, so it took a while, but I found it. The place where I die. I guess this is sacrifice enough. Sacrifice to the bird god or something. They're pretty noisy. Ow! That thing just pecked me! D1144 does not speak for six minutes and intermittently hums music. Suddenly, all bird sounds stop. That definitely can't be a good sign. The area brightens. D1144 looks up and sees a large door opening above him. A large amorphous mass, visibly similar to white cloth and red stains, reaches down from the opening. <sighs> Bring it. The mass engulfs D11424. V cuts out entirely for about one minute. Whoever else, I don't think, can see or hear this. I can see nothing in here. Just dark stuff. A maroon shape appears, shifting irregularly. Oh, yay, let's skip the middleman. I'll give blood to the coke guard directly. What even are you? This shape extends and surrounds D11424 in several more cloth-like appendages. One of the appendages has a hand at its end, holding a knife. Crap! Help! The appendages completely engulf D11424. The entity emits a loud, low rumble. D11424 screams intermittently for about four minutes. It's cutting into me! 48 seconds of silence. Hear that voice. I'm, uh... Honored? Not sure if I got what you want. 23 seconds of static. Huh? 
The UV turns in full as a cloth entity appears to shove a limb D-11424 into what looks like a garbage chute. Several cranks are heard as D-11424 descends before he emerges in into a naturally lit square vertical shaft, which extends for an undetermined distance. Concrete portals from before lying all four walls of the shaft, out of which piles of various meats are seen to fall. Where D-11424 falls into a large body of water. After a minute of floating in place, D-11424 is forcefully pulled down and towards the original SCP-3379 portal. Halfway there, D-11424 begins to regain consciousness and resists the pull. His movements revealed that the pulling originates from several tendrils, with hands in place of suckers, similar to the ones encountered earlier. D-11424 is ejected through SCP-3379 and emerges to swim to the surface. I- I survive! Holy crap! And log. D-11424 was recovered by the onboard SCP-3379 research team and taken into the sick bay. D-11424 was found to be missing one kidney, two fingers, his scuba gear, and was unable to remember anything starting from his sixth birthday and ending on his eighth. D-11424 reported the experience to be traumatizing but fun overall.